How many of us crawl into bed each night, sleeping in the city, yet wishing we lived just a little closer to nature? Luckily, nature is never far from our home in San Sebastian. Apart from being right on the Atlantic, San Sebastian sits directly upon an ancient pilgrimage route, the Camino de Santiago. The Camino, or the Way of St. James, is really a series of footpaths crisscrossing Europe and converging at the Spanish city of Santiago de Compostela, the burial place of St. James the Apostle and the third holiest city in Christendom. Catholic pilgrims have been walking these paths for well over a thousand years, hoping to find spiritual salvation somewhere along the way to Santiago. These days, though Europe is more secular than ever, the Camino has become popular with people looking for something beyond their daily lives, whether it be physical challenge, spiritual awakening, or simply a bit of time to think. Now Mark and I have both walked the Camino, but as usual, in our own different ways. Mark chose the Camino Frances, which goes from France through the Pyrenees and the Spanish heartland. Alex took the coastal route from San Sebastian through the Basque Country in Cantabria to Asturias and Galicia. With boots and a backpack, we left our city lives behind for over a month. For us, it was a chance to unplug and experience the most ancient form of travel, walking. So when our childhood friend Kit Barmeyer told us that he'd quit his job to walk the Camino, we left San Sebastian in a hurry to meet him in Cantabria. We hoped that by joining him on his Camino, we could recapture that incredible feeling of being a pilgrim on the way to Santiago. If only for a weekend. Most people walk the Camino in the summer, but Kit chose November, just as the icy rains of winter were setting in. It seemed there wasn't another soul on the Camino. Good thing if you like solitude, not so good if you need a place to sleep. Pilgrims usually sleep in humble hostels called albergues. Some are free, the rest cost a few euros, but the majority are closed in the winter. We found one such albergue, but it was being deliced. So we got turned out back into the rain. We retired to the only bar in town to come up with a plan and enjoy a favorite pilgrim pastime. Trading stories and sharing advice on how to survive a 500 mile walk. Oh, it's cold and we have to sleep outside tonight so we are warming ourselves up with the local Basque liqueur. This is called Pacharan. It seems like it's back to the patio and the church. The door is locked. Hopefully Jesus won't mind. We're gonna sneak into heaven tonight and sleep on the church patio. <laughs> crazy, the same spot that I slept in a year and a half ago, where I met some of the most important people during my Camino. We come here and we've met two really cool dudes from Argentina doing the Camino who are camping out in the same spot. I guess the pilgrim mind functions in the same way. You see a church that's protected from the rain and from the weather and you think, ahí duermo yo, that's where I'm going to sleep. What was that, Mark? The way of the pilgrim. My back hurts. We kept Kit company on a rainy night and, as often is the case, made new friends to join us on the Camino. The next day, the storm had passed and the earth was cleansed. It seemed our minds were as clear as the sky above, and as our conversations died down, we fell into the rhythm of our footsteps and tuned into the cadence of the Camino.
As for me, I realize that though Alex and I are blessed to live so close to the community of Santiago, we mustn't place peace, happiness, or enlightenment in some distant cathedral. It is here now, waiting for us to see what lies right before our eyes. Alex and I had already made it to Santiago, and we knew that soon Kit would as well. But in hindsight, arriving in Santiago was anticlimactic because our Caminos never finish until the day we die. The important thing is to try to live each day with the simplicity and joy of that brief time on the Camino de Santiago. As Mark and I sat with Kit to share one last beer before saying goodbye, we watched the sunset and shared our reflections from the Camino. My month on the Camino showed me the truth in the old cliche that life itself is a journey. There will always be hills to climb, rivers to cross, and challenges to overcome. Sometimes you have help, and sometimes you're all alone. But no matter where you're going, you always get there, one step at a time. In short, the Camino taught me to slow down, breathe deeply, and most importantly, keep on walking. thousand people playing in 125 different bands and yet no one seemed to tire of hearing the same three songs.